Good afternoon, uh, and thank you for coming to uh, this talk. Uh, I'm Chang Wu from I'm Token Labs, and I'm Token is a Lancaster Wally based in Singapore. And today I'm going to talk about a topic which is called post merge Wally. So before the talk, I would like to ask you guys a question what is your ideal wallet? I think many of you may like use MetaMask, maybe I'm Token, or other wallets. So, what is your ideal wallet looks like? You don't need to have a, a answer the question now, but uh, it's uh, worthy uh, to think about it. So let's take some time to look at uh, where we are now and look back at the past. The past. I would like to go through some number and some observation uh, from what we have right now. So here is the adoption map of the Ethereum. Uh, of the Ethereum users. So we can see uh, many users are distributed in uh, North America, Europe, Asia, and everywhere. But uh, these users are really are crypto users. So how do I define crypto users? That is because uh, not everyone uses the crypto wallet. But I think uh, most of the people right now, they just use the decentralized exchange, like Binance, like FTS exchange. So how do we, I mean, uh, turn this kind of situation? So make more people to get into the crypto wallet. That is the, the, the core idea of this topic. So for now, there are over 221 million people uh, have quick, uh, cryptocurrency right now. Uh, this number might not be accurate, just for reference. If we assume the number is correct, then 97% of people don't know crypto or don't have any kind of crypto assets. So one day, if you want to uh, introduce the crypto wallet to your parents, your friend, or even your teacher, how do you do that? Can you help them to set up a crypto wallet in two minutes, five minutes, or even in 10 minutes? I think the answer uh, for now probably is no. It's really hard for them to know what is crypto because the learning curve is pretty high. So here are the challenges um, we are facing every day. If you are working as a wallet company, then you, you will receive uh, the feedback like this every day. So people don't know how, what is the crypto, what is the, the C phrase, and also they don't know how to speed up the transaction when their transaction is get stuck. For those questions, so we need to come up with some solution uh, for the future wallets, how do we fix it? So, uh, if we want to make the uh, mass adoption to happen, crypto wallet is an uh, important entry point uh, for onboard the Web3 users. Yeah, so we need to fix it. So, how, how to fix it? So, let's recap it again. So, if we want to rebuild a wallet, then we need, we, we need to know what the uh, future wallet looks like. So. Uh, this is a very, I mean, very good question because if you think about the smart contract developer in 2018 or 2019, at that moment, because they didn't sense or they didn't know there is a kind of attack called NDV attack. So when you, uh, when you design a smart contract at that time, um, eventually you are, uh, you really hard to defend uh, NDV. NEV attack. So that's why we need to know what is the future and that we need to know how to design the, the wallet. And so this is the reason this topic called the possible uh, merge wallet. So let's uh, look at the future. The concept of the end game is proposed by Vitalik in uh, 2021. Uh, actually, it's, uh, the goal is to scale in the Ethereum for many users so we can come up, uh, we can onboard more users to the Ethereum ecosystem. For the end game, uh, in, in the article that uh, Vitalik uh, mentioned, Ethereum is piped into a raw solution uh, centric roadmap. What does this mean? It means we can, we, uh, today we have already seen lots of layer two solutions coming up, just like Starnet, uh, Aztec, Uptron, or Optimism. Since uh, if the layer two is the future, that means we need to have more data space for the raw up. So how do we have more data on the rollup? So here are two ways we can do that. So first, we need to have more 
uh, gets more larger block. And the, the block need to be verified very easily for the line climb. If we can do so, then we can have a large block. And that is what Dan Shardin is uh, doing. And another approach to, to do this is how do we make the data smaller? If we can make uh, each low up transaction smaller, then it could fit into the uh, bigger block, then that means we can get a lot of I mean, transaction get into the block. So in the future, ideally, we think uh, there might be a high TPS with a low fee, uh, transaction fee into the blockchain system. This is important because if we look back at the history of the internet, then we will find this is a kind of a similar. So when the internet was born, uh, the bandwidth is a secret resource, and it is very expensive. Not any, everyone can afford to the internet. With the cost decreasing, then we can see many of many applications start to growing uh, on the internet. So if you if you was in 1998, you probably don't think about what is YouTube, what is Netflix. But if you are in uh, 2020 or in two, or for uh, 2022, then you, uh, you, you might think Netflix is makes sense. We can have more uh, on, uh, online video. With cheaper transaction fee, we can do more things, not just DeFi, not just uh, NFT. We can do lots of uh, potential application in the market. So yeah, let's, let's think about how do we make the wallet better so we can have more application uh, on board into the e Ethereum ecosystem. So yeah, we need to have a wallet which fits raw, uh, layer two raw mat and is user is friendly. Here I want to give you a very brief short summary. So first, it's really hard for the general user to know what is crypto, what is Ethereum. Think about it. If you want to teach your parents to set up a wallet, the first thing, the first thing is they need to write up the C phrase. So why is C phrase? Yeah, it's difficult to understand. And then next, they need to, uh, if they want to send some token, then they need to have some ether. So this is another thing that's uh, quite, quite challenging for them because they, they say, um, what? This cannot trans uh, make a trans transfer if unless I got some ethers. The second thing is the user experience is pretty uh, bad now. Um, because I, I think because the learning curve is is pretty high, so most of the user don't know how to I mean uh, run a, a wallet, like how do I interact with the DeFi? If there is a new application, how do I access the application? They need to learn it from the video or some guy, or, or they really uh, or it's really hard for them to know how to do that. And third, uh, just like I mentioned. Uh, for now, we have already have some users, but most of the users are not crypto users. They are just general users. And because all of this challenge, uh, they, are, they are just uh, stay with the centralized exchange. How do we, I mean, try to, uh, try to get them into the ecosystem? So we need to have a layer two ready wallet, which is designed for the future. I think this is a very big thing because in DevCon we see the merge is already finished. So the layer two is, a, if the layer two is the future, so we need to start to thinking about what is the future wallet look like. So finally, it's a, a requirement uh, we think uh, an ideal wallet should have. It's overwhelming if you are working, again, if you are working at the wallet company, this is really overwhelming. Every day you will rec uh, receive uh, user's feedback uh, complaining uh, that their token was stolen or they just make, uh, they just approve to some fake contract. So how do we avoid that, avoid it? And even though there are more uh, important, important question is how do we uh, make sure the user's access is safe? and how do we um, help them to manage their key. So today, I'm not going to go over this topic, but I will just focus on the key management and the how do we make their account could be recoverable. Here are two solutions. Uh, one, is, uh, one is MPC, 
and the other is AA, uh, abstract account. I think the abstract account uh, is a very popular topic uh, during the DevCon talk uh, every day. So you might probably might heard about it. But for MPC, what is MPC? MPC actually is a multi-party computation. So think about uh, this example. If you want to generate a random number, you can ask, um, if you want to generate random numbers through three people, you can ask each one to, to uh, for a number, and then we can sum it up to get the result. So actually, the MPC is uh, a way for jointing computing a function over the input. Let's take another example. Uh, if we can take the signature as a result, we can ask each party to contribute part of its secret numbers as the input, and then we can get the signature. So this is kind of some moon mass or magic. Uh, magic. Uh, we, do, we, do, we do not need to have a private key, but we can generate the validate signature. So the input is not related to the private key, so you don't need to worry about once your device got lost because there's no private key stored in the device. But, all, but eventually, the signature will be generated. The way it operates is pretty similar to multi-sig. Uh, think about that. If a user needs to uh, request a, tr a transaction, it needs to uh, have another, another party to, comp to co work to generate the signature. So this is uh, really like the multi-sig multi -sig way to, uh, to send a transaction. So this is a very uh, important feature for the uh, MPC wallet. And the MPC wallet uh, looks like an EOA with an invisible private key. Besides, it could be designed with the threshold settings, uh, for example, like uh, two of three. So for example, if, we, uh, if this is a threshold signature, then we can, uh, if we want to send a transaction, then the device need to um, co-work with another device, uh, which is online together to generate the signature. But also, this is the, uh, the, uh, the weakness of the MPC. It needs it need the help of another online devices to work in together. If you think about that, uh, for this secret, which is uh, distributed to different devices, it could be uh, stored in some, it could uh, degrade to some decentralized uh, centralized service. So, for example, if, we, uh, if, the, if the service helps to store this secret, then the service could help the user to identify the, the transaction is valid or not, because one day, if the, uh, the user wants to interact with the app or some DeFi application, once this party finds the DeFi is fake or is a scam, then it can, it can stop to help to generate the signature. So it's, it's more like a, this is a kind of like a, a risk control function. And another part for the MPC is um, it could support multi-chain. Because as I mentioned, the MPC wallet looks like an EOA with an invisible private key. So all of the, if this, uh, this is a wallet, and they are all go with this invisible private key. For, so for MPC wallet, it could support BTC, Bitcoin. It also can support the Ethereum. And all of the uh, public chain is uh, their, if their signature is MPC friendly. So this is per, uh, sounds perfect. But for the MPC solution, just, uh, just like I, what I mentioned, it requires having an online computing unit uh, to co work with. Uh, these are accounts. In Ethereum, we have th these two, two types of account. One is EOA, and the other is a smart contract account. So I just t uh, talk about the EOA over the MPC solution. So how about we talk about the contract account? So this is the uh, abstract account wallet. So it's a kind of a uh, smart contract wallet. So the nice thing that the smart contract is, it is flexible. You can call anything into the smart contract. So you can have a customized uh, rule. So you can define your rule uh, into this smart contract. With the AA uh, wallet, there is an entry, uh, entry point with two phases, verification and execution, because in 
uh, current Ethereum transactions are verified by ECDA signature um, with balance and then nonce check and then uh, execute the transfer of all the code function. So we need to have, the, uh, we need to define this verification and the execution. So this is a pretty easy for the AA wallet. So what does is important? If we can customize uh, each kind of verification rule, so that means we can define any kind of uh, signature that's um, in the smart contract, like BOS, like Shino, or like EDDSA. So we can have all kind of um, signature, uh, signature verification rule uh, building into a smart contract. And also, if we think this is not safe, we can make it uh, as a multi-signature wallet. So that means you can control, uh, they, they, uh, the wallet could be controlled by five people, but only three people uh, approve, then the transaction can be executed. And then the other uh, uh, advantage is it could be designed to verify off-chain signing messaging. So this is pretty important because if you think about a meta, tra meta transaction um, or yeah, if you think about a meta transaction or some gaming app, because the user don't know how to get the ethers. So if you can have some relayer to help them to relay the, uh, to relay the transaction, th that would be useful because they don't need to uh, buy the ether when they want to send the transaction. And the, the last is, I think it is more important, is we can change the signer. Okay, to me, the most important and the interesting thing uh, for abstract account is we can abstract account from the signer, uh, from the EOA. So that means we can have a signer and uh, we can have an account, uh, but the account doesn't equal to signer. So this is a very important feature because one day if we want to um, design a kind of application like DID or Sobang token, the account could be fixed and uh, it could, we can have the same address, but we can uh, have a different signer to control this account. Uh, here is a summarize uh, of the, some part of features of uh, the MPC wallet and the abstract wallet, uh, AA wallet. So for MPC, uh, it's developed in 2018, and uh, for now there are uh, many protocol are uh, used, uh, so you can use any kind of this uh, to design your MPC wallet. For AA, recently there are some uh, EIP like uh, 29, 38, and the 23, 37. Yeah. So if you if you are interested in, then you can uh, try to uh, read it. And the Alice, Alice is actually is a, a hierarchical threshold signature uh, protocol, which is designed by me and my colleague. Uh, uh, this is a, a different threshold signature because we can have a different asset structure trying to make the share with a hierarchical level. Compare some of the important feature with the MPC and the, the AA wallet. So for MPC and, the, and, and AA, both of them are, uh, could run uh, in multi-sig way. So that means we can have a multi-signature multi uh, operation too. But for AA, because the account and the signer could be different, so that means the account could be changed in the future. So this is a pre, uh, uh, not, not a con, con, the signer could be changed. Uh, this, this is a typo, okay. But for MPC, because the private key is equal to account and the, the signer, so yeah, it's, this is not possible. But for MPC and the AA wallet, because they, they all could be designed uh, with a social recovery, so they, both of them work with that. And for MPC and the uh, AA wallet, all of them can support risk control. Uh, just like what I mentioned, MPC wallet, you can, if you delegate your secret share to another centralized service, then th this centralized service could help you to uh, filter those uh, malicious operation from the users. But for AA, because this is a smart contract wallet, so you can define any kind of rule into the smart contract, like you can set the daily with withdrawal limit, or you can uh, have some uh, whitelist address. But for MPC, because this is a, uh, it's more like a private key solution, so it could support multi-chain. But for the AA wallet, because it runs on the smart contract, so that means if the public chain does not have the smart contract, 
or uh, fins or or it's not EVM compatible, then it cannot be support multi-chain. And for MPC, uh, because this is not the smart contract, so it, it could not be uh, doing some meta transaction. Uh, so yeah, for AA, it can take advantage of the meta transaction. But for DeFi friendly, I think this is a very, very important point here. So A sounds like a pretty cool thing, but uh, if you try to look at all of the smart contract uh, developed right now, not every smart contract supports smart contract wallet. So that means only the EOA can control or can interact with the smart contract. And also, another thing is uh, most people do not support EIP 2071. It's an interface for the smart contract wallet. Yeah, so this is a uh, um, I think it, this is the advantage of the MPC wallet. From this table, we can see the, pro, pro, the pros and the, the cons of this kind of these two uh, solutions. I just follow the mean uh, from the, it's too much, yeah. And where's Xiao Wei? I just showed, so Xiao Wei is here. Hey, Xiao Wei. <laughs> yeah, we can combine MPC and the AI wallet, uh, so we can design a future wallet. You can have a wallet like that, uh, if we consider this is a future wallet, then have a signer here, and then we can have an account into the smart contract wallet. And also, uh, because of the uh, feature of the MPC and the AA, uh, for MPC, it could be run in off-chain, but for AA, it could be, it, because all of the uh, operations are on the smart contract, so it should be on-chain. So there are two different features, but I think you can take advantage uh, of this kind of two solutions. And third, because uh, just like I mentioned, MPC need another party to be online to help to co-work to uh, generate a signature, so it should be synchronized. But for a, but for AA, it, sh it could be uh, synchronized. But this is not really friendly for multi-signature multi wallet because for multi-signature wallet, when you send a request, you need to have another party to sign the transaction. So there is a lot of delay. So at the last, I think uh, if we can combine these two kind of solution, this is a benefit. We can uh, design a future wallet for this kind of application. Like for payment, because for payment, you need to have a very user-friendly wallet. So, and for DID, you need to have an account, uh, have an uh, address, which is the same as an account. Yeah, so we can do a lot of things if we can combine these two kinds of uh, solution. So thank you. Uh, this is uh, my talk. <laughs>